first is we've installed the bottom rail for you. And just so you can have a closer look, it's made up of brackets. If you look at the TV screen, uh, it's got brackets like so. Um, and just here is where it hooks around the back of the tiles and the buttons so it holds into position. So that's what you can see down at the bottom. So that's what these, well, that's what these are here. That's what those devices are. So we have to take a little bit out of this top tile because they're about five millimeters thick. So we have to use an angle grinder to, to grind out the back of the tile so it sits flush. And the next thing we need to do is get the top brackets in. So I'm gonna walk up the roof and Stephen's gonna pass me the other three brackets. Phil, just while they're doing that, what are the key attributes as far as you're concerned with the, the, the demonstration we're seeing this afternoon in terms of the equipment and so on? Right, well, the uh, panels that we're facing today are our are, are lifestyle panels, which is our top spec flat plate panel. Uh, it, it has taken over from our FKC, FKT panels, have been out for five or six years. And a lot of the guys that installed the previous kit said there's one or two things that we would like improved or tweaked or what have you, which I'll point out as we go through and as we put the panels on. So the panels have been altered and the, and the way that they fit to the rails have been altered a little bit to ensure that um, it's simpler and more straightforward for the guys like uh, Chris and Steve to do. I'll just talk one or two uh, uh, points with you as we go. Uh, Chris now is, uh, is putting the brackets into place. Now, the rails that the screws, uh, uh, that the rails screw into is a, longer, is a longer length, so you've got more room for movement there, so you're not quite as, uh, you don't have to be quite as precise with your measurements. And the way that the rails bolt together now, they clip together without the use of any tools, so you simply push the, the central forming guide in, as Steve is doing now, that will then lock in place with the, without the use of any tools. So it's just keeping your hands free as much as we possibly can. And what we would recommend is you do as much as you possibly can at ground level before you start to do this Brilliant. up on the roof. Brilliant. But these, uh, these two chaps are a pro. Another part of the system is, obviously you can see how Chris there is hooking, these, hooking the brackets over the tile and over the tile batten. With, these, with this system, you can also unscrew this flip this bracket round so it's going up the roof so it can also screw into the spars through them holes. The cameraman zooms in on this, what I'm going to do now, then you should see that there is a gap just, just there um, of about five millimetres where the tile is kicked up and it's, it's slightly kicked up there as well. Now, I'm only doing that to demonstrate to you if it's done wrong by somebody who's not a roofer, that's how they would probably leave it. And if you get, get that bar all fastened in place, another really good um, part for what the Worcester Boss provide is a hook over system. This hook hooks over the rails, which allows us when we put the panels in situ, it stops them from sliding off the roof before we've tightened them up. So all we do is click them in place like that really easy to do right so are we lifting this up obviously to you? getting these up onto the roof will use our winch which we've set up because working with hse again you've got to make sure you can't be carrying these up ladders in fact if you that's see someone right turning up with a ladder if you see someone turning up with the ladders that's the time to turn them away isn't that's it? the time to turn them away yeah, yeah. like we say we get get the winches set up, once we get on to set, once every, we've got all the bracket systems in place, we winch it, Sorry. attach it to a winch, winch it to the roof area, which we're at now, and then Chris will... I'm going to go up on the roof. Get onto the roof. You lower it down, and I'll off, catch off you, the off top you end. Off Are you going to keep on at bottom I'll end? keep on this time. Right, OK. What you've got to remember is this is like a sail. If you've got to keep on of it at all times and treat it with care, because if you get a big gust of wind, it can have you off the roof along with the panel, so you're always thinking about health and safety. You okay? I'm sliding it into there. Is it? Do you want to get it in those bottom brackets? Just is it in here? Yeah. Has it gone in? No, I don't mean that. I mean on the safety ones. Is it in them? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's okay. Yep. Be a yeah. Are you okay? Yep. 
as we've shown there, that's a bit that's a beauty about having these brackets in position. Once we get the panel on in place, even though we haven't tightened the brackets, it's not going to slip off the roof. It's that, um, the Allen key here, so it's been turned in, into position, so it tightens the end up and it clamps the bracket down because there's a little lip here, so it tightens it down onto this rail. So I've done that top and bottom. Do you want to tighten that into place, Chris? Next thing, we're putting the mid clamps in. We see these like cl large clamps. Chris is inserting his into position, which you wanted to talk about, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I will if I will for one point. Uh, this is another thing that the, uh, that the guys that had installed our panels had said before, that they weren't too sure if it had been clamped up properly or not. So green these little green tabs oh. underneath are designed that when this clamp is nice and tight, on the other side where those holes are, the green little tabs will, will spring out and we're sure that uh, then the, the panel is locked and secure in place uh, uh, under the clamp. So it's a visual check to ensure that it's nice and tight for you. All right? Great. Lovely. Thank uh, you. What we recommend is we'd be looking at uh, one square metre of panel per, uh, per 50 litres of right. cylinder size. Got so it. the example that we've got here of the two panels, we'd be looking at something like one of our 210, 250 litre panel. Uh, 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 cylinders will be fine. Uh, a perfect match. What we do is we always ensure that our our cylinder is a little bit too big for our panels, so we've always got a little bit of solar gain, so it's always at work. Right. The last thing we want to do is we want for the sun to be out, our cylinders are up to temperature, because it doesn't do the fluid in our panels a great deal of good. Okay, spin it round. Now, as you see, you might say the writing's upside down but we're actually putting the panel on the right way because at the top of the panels, which has always got to be fit to the top, it's got a little hole. Which for a thermometer. For a thermometer, which tells us what temperature the panel's at and makes it work through that system there. So oh, the Steve, version, Steve you stole my thunder there. Oh, oh gosh, I'm you so sorry. There. I was just going to compare between the two. You were ready for uh, that then, weren't you? Yeah, I was ready. I was all sorry. set for you. He's like that. It though. was designed on purpose. I'll show you uh, one and all. Hang on. What happens if, as a house owner, you're OCD and you really want it the right <laughs> way? Down, 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 uh, down, our down. panels actually come okay. um, unfinished. There's no sticker on them at all, so right. they wouldn't okay. know any other way. But uh, we'll speak more about right. that in a moment or two. So you're saying the right end's upside down? Same again. We've got the end clamps again, which just push into the end of the, the bars. Chris, would you like to put these in position or would you like me to? Well, I'm doing the middle. Okay, I'll do it for you. That'll be a you then. That'll be a me. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, be you. you then. Is that an executive decision? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to make sure this middle's clamped down. Don't want them blowing off, Stephen. In this no. gale force wind we've got. <laughs> so, I fit them into position where they need to be, and then I tight, tighten them up so obviously so the panel can't move anywhere. Nice and secure. Same at the bottom. Sure, are you sure it can't move? It can't move. Can't move. And then once we've got all the panels tightened up where they need to be, the next part will be to put the, the thermal pipes into the roof space, which Chris will just talk you through now. Am I doing that now, am I? Are we still there? Oh, we're still there. Keep managing to knock this off. So, when I've attached this, I'll let the... Um, we need one of these. It's called um, a solar deck lead, lead slate. And we need this to make sure that the penetration for the pipe, which goes through the centre, um, is watertight at all times. And also, this is made of um, silicon. So it will go up to very, very high temperatures. So it will go plus 200 degrees Celsius. So that in, you need this to maintain its water integrity. So you would put this on the entry and exit point. So I've done one earlier, it's a different colour. If you have a look at this one here. So this one we've dressed it in underneath these tiles so it's watertight. Got the covering there, the pipe would come out and it would fix in to the end of the panel. And we put another one of these, not just where Stephen's hand is, but a bit nearer towards the panel. So you've got a, a flow and a return or a feed and a return. Yeah. And then, then both ends where the pipes 
going into the plumber who will be inside the roof void, a watertight, and it's guaranteed for the full lifetime of the panels. So, 